Take a look at this. See how the picture here sits in front of the clock? That is Apple's new software called iOS 16, and that is App's regular host, Carlton Prouty. I've stolen his iPhone so I can show you around the new operating system. Now, you might ask, why does he have a picture of himself on his iPhone? We will dive into that and lots of useful features of iOS 16 right now. Hi, I'm Andrew from Apt. Let's talk about iOS 16. Apple's latest software has a bunch of upgrades that could make your life easier if you have an iPhone or you wanna buy an iPhone or you wanna share Carl's iPhone with me. We could work out a schedule. Actually, the new software even affects you if you have an iPad or one of these guys, the Apple HomePod Mini. Here's everything you need to know about iOS 16. You can download the latest software for free even if you have an older iPhone. It's available for all models going back to the iPhone 8 and even the iPhone SE. And of course it's available and finely tuned for the latest and greatest iPhone, the 14. The biggest new feature is this revamped lock screen. Again, notice how the image overlays with the time to give it a feeling of depth. If you're so inclined, please say ooh and ah now to help add to the feeling of majesty and thankfully there are a lot of other more subtle improvements. Still on that lock screen, you can add interactable widgets now like the time and weather so you can see some info right away without needing to unlock your phone. Like any other new feature, you don't have a ton of third party options yet, but I imagine they won't be that far behind. This is Apple. Notifications pop up from the bottom and you have a couple of options as far as how they're displayed. And you can also use the lock screen to interact with focus mode. Focus mode itself isn't new. It's Apple's way of helping you filter what you look at on your phone. In work mode, you'll only get notifications of work emails, for example. And now with iOS 16, you can switch focuses from your lock screen and tailor the image to match your mode. Here, you'll see we have casual Carl. This is his personal time focus mode and just looking at it makes me want to relax. Now, let's switch to our work time focus mode and business time Carl, looking sharp, looking professional and a touch severe while still being so gosh darn approachable. And of course, you're allowed to use your own pictures for these modes as well. Apple encourages, but does not require you to use pictures of Carl. Some changes to texting and emailing are also welcome additions. That means, yes, I'm finally leaving the lock screen. You can edit a text you just sent in messages, which is perfect if autocorrect tells your spouse that you plan to kill her instead of kiss her. That's only iPhone to iPhone though. So if you have one of those weird Android people in your family, make sure your texts are right the first time or your accidental threats will be part of your permanent record. You can now also share things like notes and presentations in messages. You can mark messages as unread so you remember to come back to them and check this out you can actually drag and drop the subject out of a picture and into a message. You can schedule and undo sends in the mail app too, about time. When sending messages with dictation, Apple will now automatically add punctuation. So if you say something questiony, a question for instance, you won't have to tell Apple to add a question mark, it'll just do it, no questions asked. Plus, you can tap and edit with dictation as well. The idea is to make the experience more fluid so you can tap or talk as needed. One cool high-tech feature, your phone will now be able to recognize text in videos as well as photos. And then the software can translate that text or pull up a website from a URL or help you make conversions if it's a foreign currency so you can be spared the terrible indignity of doing any math yourself. A few other odds and bobbles that I'll roll through quickly. 
Pass keys are new digital keys that replace passwords with your face or fingerprints to help you browse the internet more securely as long as you're willing to use Safari. There is better photo sharing in iCloud now. You can split payments in Apple Pay to break up big purchases over time. The fitness app can track goals more efficiently even if you're not using a wearable. There's a privacy tool called Safety Check if you need to remove permissions quickly from the devices you aren't using. Some accessibility updates like live captioning, family sharing updates, including getting requests for more screen time in messages. And I mentioned the iPad, which is getting better multitasking with Stage Manager. But my favorite update is a simple one. Apple has revamped the look of its smart home app, just called Home. It was fine before if you only had a couple of smart home devices, but if you had a bunch, it was hard to navigate. Now, you have these categories at the top. You can reorder the sections to put the rooms you use the most within easy reach. You can hide the stuff you don't want to look at. And I'm talking individual devices you don't use much anymore or whole sections that you can shift toward the bottom, like favorites. Quiz for you. Can you name your favorite lamp? If so, Congrats, I'm glad you have a good thing going with your light fixtures. Favorite is a strong word for me when it comes to utilitarian household items. And yeah, I know I can just put frequently used items there, no affection necessary. But in a more complex smart home, it can get so bogged down that it's useless. Now I can hide favorites by burying it. And then even if you have a bunch of stuff in one room, horizontal scrolling keeps it compact so that you can quickly scroll vertically to what room you want to see. Now, part of the reason Apple is doing this is to set the stage for Matter, which is an upcoming smart home standard that will let Apple stuff talk to Google stuff, talk to Amazon stuff. Coincidentally, Apple's ecosystem of compatible gadgets is about to blow up. And thus, it's now easier to use the Home app to find the gadgets you actually use and organize them, because really, you don't want to be controlling your smart home with an app. You want to use your voice and a cool smart speaker like this little guy. One last outstanding question. Hey Siri, why does Carl have pictures of himself on his phone? I found some web results. I can show them if you ask again from your iPhone. <laughs> well, that is an unexpected result. Thank you very much, Siri. And that is now one mystery solved. And hopefully, iOS 16 is now less mysterious for you. If you did find the video helpful and you enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to App's YouTube channel for lots more helpful videos on tech just like this. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have more questions about iOS 16, just give Carl a call. His cell phone number is 847. How did you get my phone? Well, anyways, you can call us if you have questions on iOS 16. We're always happy to help. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.